Alice Berry. On the morning of October 13, 1974, Stanford University was stunned to discover that, a 19-year-old newlywed freshman named Arliss Perry had been brutally murdered. The night before, Arliss had gotten into an argument with her husband, and decided to go pray at Stanford Memorial Church. She never returned home, and her body was found in the church under some views. Arliss had been stabbed through the skull, with an eyes pick and had also been choked beaten and sexually assaulted with some altar candles. Arla's husband was immediately cleared as a suspect, but there were some other intriguing leads. At the time, Arla's worked as a receptionist at a law firm. The day before she was killed, Arla's was visited there by an unidentified blonde man, and they engaged in a heated conversation that left her visibly upset. Rumors soon emerged that, Arliss had been murdered in a satanic ritual by a cult called the Process Church of the Final Judgment. Some members of this cult reportedly hailed from Arliss' hometown of Bismarck, North Dakota. Charles Manson and David Berkowitz, the notorious son of Sam Killer, were also believed to have been members of this cult at some point and while incarcerated, Berkowitz actually wrote some letters implying that they were responsible for Arliss' murder. Some people are skeptical that this cult actually exists and believe that Berkowitz was just toying with investigators, but if that's true, who really killed Darla's Berry? Jack Davis Jr. On the evening of October 16, 1987, 20-year-old sophomore Jack Davis Jr. went out partying with some of his fraternity brothers at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. He never returned that night, and would remain missing, until his body was discovered at the bottom of an exterior stairwell, at Wayand Hall five days later. The coroner concluded that, Jack had gotten intoxicated on the night he disappeared, before accidentally falling down the stairwell, and choking to death on his own vomit. Jack's family did not believe this ruling. So they hired renowned forensic pathologist Dr. Cyril Wecht, to conduct an investigation, since a classroom overlooked the stairwell, it seemed impossible that Jack's body could remain undiscovered for five days. Even though there was heavy rain, during that five-day period, his clothes were completely dry. Wecht also found it suspicious that, Jack had no alcohol in his blood, and despite the fact that he was clean-shaven on the night he went missing, there was stubble on Jack's face. Wecht determined that, Jack could not have choked on his vomit and found some fractures on his skull. One theory is that Jack may have been injured during a fight between rival fraternities, who later placed Jack's body in the stairwell after he died from his injuries. However, in spite of Dr. Weck's new findings, Jack's death remains unsolved. Lynn Schultz Just turned old enough to buy cigarettes. Lynn Schultz was a freshman who had traveled from her hometown of Simbury, Connecticut to attend Middlebury College in Vermont. On December 10, 1971, she was preparing for the final exams before Christmas break. Lynn left her dormitory with her friends, and was on her way to take one of the exams, when she told them she had forgotten her favorite pen. Lynn headed back to her dorm to get it, but did not return to take the exam, and was never seen again. A search of her dorm room revealed that, her identification and personal belongings had been left behind. Lynn had apparently been telling friends about the idea of faking her own death, and starting a new life, and this rumor may have prevented authorities from fully investigating her disappearance. However, Lynn's friends never took her claims seriously, and since she had been studying hard for her exam, it didn't make much sense that, she would not show up to take it. While Lynn had sent letters to her family, saying she was homesick and thinking of withdrawing from school, she did register for classes the following semester. While there have been some unconfirmed sightings of Lynn, since her disappearance, she has never contacted her family, and remains missing over 40 years later.